So as the axis of evil decide to possibly use chemical weapons, and we'll see history will write itself, and freedom will write, it, write itself, and the idea that people don't gas people, so... Anyway, we'll see what happens in the Middle East. It's ramping up very high tensions. So, as we go towards a physical, basically it's a checkbook cliff, and basically uh, the checkbook has been shredded and thrown away. So if you ain't got money, you're in trouble. Now, let's get up to space stuff. We got this on up here. We believe, behind the solar panel. We've never seen anything like this before. Now, no matter what, this line here that's flashing there is like on my pointer, and we'll get we'll get up on the 999. We'll go 999. 777 or whatever we need to do to zoom in and look at this stuff and we got Mercury back here, Earth, Venus, Jupiter more than likely this should be Saturn and you have Neptune, Pluto and Uranus that are all over here behind the Earth always in the dark area as space and with the bright areas over here in the Milky Way galaxy and as we have the Sun we know that Mars is over here okay you got Mercury sitting right there so we don't really have anything missing. So anything else that shows up or has been showing up, and we figure this to be the sun, which is the satellite which must be closer than what it's ever been really before or whatever on shading and so forth and so on. Uh, there's something where the idea they're up closer. And what I'm wondering is if they're actually hiding what we've been kind of getting a little glimpse of, the idea that there's got to be more over there. If you see blinking down here, which has got magneticals to the sun, which is here, that basically the other side that there may actually be something on the other side of the sun not just Mars okay so we'll zoom in on this and it's just based on going from Jupiter and we pretty much figure that that's Saturn down there and you kind of basically can see the rings on it as we're zoomed in here where I can point kind of does seem like you, at a far distance you can kind of see just barely the rings on Saturn there because that sure darn hell should be Saturn. And then we have part of the chain that is the yellow brick road, which pretty much is the spiral of the star cluster through the Milky Way that the sun is tied to. Okay? And then it comes up here to the sun. That's the yellow brick road right there, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Uh, I figured... Basically, I'm, not, I'm biting my tongue on the comments of what locked us in on that. So no matter what, we pretty much show that the sun is basically, more than likely, what they're always shooting at is the biggest sun. And what the physicist said a long time ago, he's not alive anymore, and it's really kind of unusual for a scientist to die at such a young age, but anyway, he's not alive anymore, and he was a physicist at NASA, he's very famous, uh, they name a bunch of stuff after him, and, uh, just in the recent last 25, 30 years, okay? Because he died in his 50s, I believe, or something like that. Late 50s. Uh, I could be wrong on the age thing. It doesn't matter. We pretty much see that we've got th three suns. As you see the strobe going off here. And no, folks, it's not the solar panel. It does have some girds in it and so forth and so on. But that's not what's separating that. Because the sun is so bright in these three stars. And basically the one they most, more than likely always show us is this sun right here. Okay, and that's why we basically have three stars that are basically, in factuality, probably the reason that we have the greatness of the light of the sun is that, more than likely, we have a three stars going supernova, but it takes thousands of years for them to do that. Is the sun going supernova right now? No. Is it heating up? Are we in kind of like a maximum of solar? We are in certain platitudes, the ionosphere, okay? The ions that we are getting from the sun, okay? Because we get everything from the sun, and I'll go to some data on that in a minute. Okay, now, you've got, that has to be Mars more than likely, no matter what. This, this is more than likely Mars right there, okay? Where my pointer's pointing at. And that's the magnetical. And no matter what, there's some other stuff that has magnetical and it's kind of basically in alignment with the magneticals of Mars. Okay? It's Mars, it's not Mercury. 
Okay, even though Mercury is the closest thing, we already know that Mercury in this shot is way on the back side. Okay. So, as we go, we'll go to the left, and then we'll go down so I can keep pointing with the pointer. And as you see, uh, as we go on the yellow brick road also, is the idea that these stars over here are close to the sun. And then the uh, DNA chain of the Milky Way galaxy ropes off like this. Now maybe it dips way down behind here, and when basically we can kind of see that if we do. And it, it probably does, because we got a chain down here, and then it probably loops back up. So, no matter what, the sun is tied to this loop chain here, and also this over here. So these are pretty much the hugest cl star clusters, or stars, right here, and also over here, that are close to the sun out in space. And no matter what, that is more than likely Mars right there, the one that's not looking like a star, that's kind of a round ball. Okay, and it looks huge because the sun really illuminates it a lot right now. The suns. It doesn't really matter. It's the sun. It's our nuclear super fusion machine that's up in the sky and gives us light here on Earth, okay? And you're getting a good look at it right there now. Either that, or by deduction, in size, that they're sure they all something huge out there, okay? And as you see, it's doing a little devilish top action there and everything like that. And we've seen the clock, but as you can see, it's pretty much got to be the sun. Suns, okay? And basically, when they look in the eyeball of it, they look at this really the biggest part right there, and they always keep an eye on that, because basically that's the majority of everything. I mean, this wouldn't keep us warm over here if the physicist was correct, and this little star over here wouldn't give us either. Now, eventually, yes, one of these could end up smashing into the sun. We'd still have the big one would win out, and the idea of the sun would still be there. So we concentrate on the big one all the time, no matter what. Now, this is all theory, because we have never let NASA totally s let us see these, the sun, and you're seeing it with your own eyes right now. So, even actual factual, if it's just completely been his false that he gave us a long time ago, and he was a major physicist, they, NASA listened to him on every, everything, okay? So, as it stops, which I don't not know why, you can still see the separation, okay? So, no matter what, we get a good glimpse at the sun, because no matter what, we know that that's Mars, the magnetical you see on, and then you also see other falling magneticals, and we'll zoom in on that. But first, we're going to pop out, so you do realize that we're at where we're at, and the size of this being way bigger than Jupiter, and Jupiter's a distance off, and yes, Venus only looks huge because of the luminosity right now, that all the stars in the supergiant's main sequence in, in the Milky Way galaxy and everything outside of our galaxy are illuminating the planets very much. As you see how much the moon is illuminated at night right now and everything. Okay? And Mercury's there and we know that that has to be Mars right there. The small little dot right there below the magnetical. Okay? And here we'll see the time of how fast the lapse is going for the day's time right there. And then we will zoom back in. We'll punch back in at 999. And then we will also go ahead and use the magnifier. And we'll first explain what we're going to try to look at when we're looking at the sun. Which we're lucky that the basically we finally get an angle where the solar panel is blocking it. And we don't have NASA just showing us this little spot and that little spot of it. Okay, Because that's got to be the sun. And if not, then something's in deep poop. And basically, if this is just the sun here, then what the hell is this here? Okay? So that's actual deduction, okay? And we know that that is Mars right there, and the magnetical of Mars. And then you also get the uh, signature off the sun, the magnetical. And basically it's got to be connected to it, the spiral somewhere in space. And this is pretty much a good shot of the spiral right there. And also here, and also down here. Just follow my cursor. It's a nice spiral, isn't it? And then spiral up, and wherever we lose it through the sun here, and then back through here. So, massive millions of miles we can see on the satellite shots. So now, as we know that this is damn well got to be Mars, this is damn well more than likely odds the sun's, sun, doesn't matter, okay? 
And if not, then the sun is doing its action here. The sun is somewhere in the solar panel. And even if we want to go that, okay, the sun's over here somewhere behind the solar panel, okay, which there is some action going on there to the left. No matter what we think, we finally got the sun with just barely its veil of the of being covered up by the solar panel here. So we're getting a great view. So we'll zoom in and see what we can find for magnetical action here with Mars to see what else we th figure that we can see back in there. So we'll go ahead and zoom up. This is your taxpayer dollars at work. This is who pays that you, and they should never shut these pictures off to you. Your taxpayer. You're part of the system. Now remember, as soon as I go to magnifier, the pointer ain't going to work for me anymore. I won't be able to point on anything. The only thing I can is when I point on magnifier on this window here. Otherwise, if I try to point in on every, anything here, we're screwed. Okay? So I can move around on the shot, and as you can see, that we are catching what we are catching from magnetical up here by the sun. So no matter what, there's a faint separation here, and there's more than just Mars back there. Okay? So I think it's pretty damn conclusive that there's got to be something on the back side of the sun that always stays completely uh, the half of the 360 of a 360 degree pi of rotation of the sun that there's something back here and we know that we get drug along with this sun or suns because it sure looks like as we zoom in more that there's three up there like that physicist always said and that's probably the biggest one that we always keep the eyeball on is that right there either that or the remnants put off a hellish glow and we know the remnants are there i.e. my other videos where I've showed you the Navy shots. So we might have time to go to that. But no matter what, we sure the hell can see something along with Mars, and it's probably a hell of a long distance between here and there, but it's magnetically connected to the Sun. No matter what, there's magneticals in this, I wouldn't say guarantee this star group here, because you get stuff that's blended together because it's a spiral out there in space. Watch the last two videos and it explains that pretty good. But no matter what, this is a magnetical of Mars right there. And there's a magnetical over here of another planet. So there's something else besides Mars. And you're seeing it very well right there. And I can zoom in a little bit more. I won't be able to point where the crap, and I probably ain't been pointing where the crap, because like I say, the pointer don't work. But you can definitely see that there's two distinct magneticals there. And I'll explain magnetos. Now uh, maybe I can move the bottom wood portion of the magnifier around enough for you to be able to understand this. And if I get it to come back up. Now, if I move the photo, I think over to get distinct. There's basically there's that blue line. And then there's another blue line. At the, at the wooden handle, there's another blue line to the left up by the magnifier lens. And pretty much right on the object. Okay? And even if that one to the left is Mars, then what the hell is the other one? And you can see distinctly that there's two different objects up there by the sun. Because that's got to be the sun, or we're in deep shit. Okay? And it looks like it's the suns to me. And we'll keep magnifying in here. And we finally get an unbridled look at the sun's actions. Because no matter what, if we got three and you just want to keep on always re some satanically, religiously thing of saying that it's just one, no matter what, there's the sun. Or we're in deep shit. Because like I say, up there you can see the heat of the electrical action. It's pretty much... Now remember, there's colorization to this, and also on the red. And that's what you have to realize, all the artwork that you always get when you go to Helio Viewer and everything like that. This is all electrical. Van Allen belts and magnification. It's all actual factual. Basically, science is on its ear of its old veil has to come off, and we know that no matter what, we are stuck to this electrical. And as you can see that there's three stars. There's, it's not just the sun. Because you can see the star action there and there. And we'll get up a little bit more and get in on it. Just like when I zoom in on these stars that are off in the distance. And we're going to just cruise through here. And you can see there's one. There's one. 
you can see the separation there's one there's one and there's one the one